Whilst not having been around for as long as the World Cup, the European Championships has certainly thrown up great moments in the history of football. The first ever European Championships took place in France in 1960. The idea of a European Championship had been discussed long before, initially proposed by Henri Delaunay. The Central European Championships had existed before, but this was a league competition that would take place over three years. The European Championships will be introduced in 1958, three years after Delaunay's death. The tournament will consist of a qualifying campaign before the final four teams will partake in the finals in the summer of 1960 to decide the winner. Many of the top European teams, however, declined to participate. West Germany, Italy and England would all decline their invitations. 16 teams were required to be involved, and UEFA were able to scrape 17 sides together for the tournament. A preliminary round was played over two legs across 1958 and 1959. The quarter-finals would take place through late 1959 and early 1960 to decide who would be going to the finals. But it was at this point where politics crept into the tournament. Spain had found their way to the quarter-finals of a 7-2 aggregate win over Poland, at the time, Spain was ruled by dictator Francisco Franco. Franco had used football for propaganda purposes before, including backing Real Madrid as they won the first five editions of the European Cup. But Franco began to express concern when Spain were drawn against the Soviet Union in the quarter-finals. The tournament rules stated that the away team's flag must be flown and their national anthem played before games. As a far-right dictator with Catholic ideologies, Franco feared that abiding to these rules may lead to a rise in communist sympathisers amongst the Spanish people. The games did initially seem as though they would take place, with the Soviet side partaking in a series of warm-up games. Spain did ask for the games to take place at a neutral venue, but this request was rejected by UEFA. In the end, only two days before the Spaniards were to travel, Franco withdrew Spain from the tournament. The Soviet Union received a bye to the finals. The final games would take place in France in the summer of 1960, and the four teams taking part would be Czechoslovakia, France, the Soviet Union, and Yugoslavia. The two semi-finals would take place on the same day, on the 6th of July 1960. France played out a scintillating affair with Yugoslavia, with the Yugoslavs coming from 4-2 down to win 5-4 and progress to the final. The Soviet Union, meanwhile, had a much easier path defeating Czechoslovakia by three goals to nil. Czechoslovakia would beat France 3-0 in a third place playoff. The first ever European Championship final would take place four days later at the Parc de Princesse in Paris. The Soviet Union had legendary goalkeeper Lev Yashin in their goal. With his trademark flat cap and all-black kit, he earned the nickname the Black Spider. He was a maverick years ahead of his time. The Soviet Union had won the Olympic Championships only four years before, and were keen to add to their medal collection. The game kicked off at the Parc de Princes. Yugoslavia would take the lead shortly before half-time, but Slava Matrivelli equalised shortly after the break. Yugoslavia did have a series of chances, but Lev Yashin's heroics were able to keep them out. Neither side could find a winner, and the game would go to extra time. With both sides desperate to avoid a coin toss to determine the winner, they used what they had left in the tank to search for the victor. And that winning goal would come from a man in red. A goal from Viktor Ponedelink in the 113th minute put the Soviets ahead, and it was enough to win the game. Full time arrived, and the Soviet Union were the first ever winners of the European Championships, thanks to the heroics of the black spider Lev Yashin. The first ever European Championships may not have been a straightforward affair, but it was the start of something big in football. Over the years, the European Championships slowly grew bigger and bigger, and today it is amongst the most watched sporting events in the world. Henri Delaunay may not have lived to see his dream fulfilled, but the trophy was named after him, showing that his legacy to the European game will always live on.